Asteroids is a subject I'm very passionate about, and a NASA official reiterated what I've been saying for months. So there's a lot of cussing in this video. You've been warned. Stay cool. All right, thanks. Enjoy. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents Science is like magic and magic tricks. Astronomy is much like Hogwarts, School of Wizardry and Science Craft. Hello and welcome to the latest edition of Asteroid Fight Club. I'm your host, Thor, and NASA Inspector Blast Asteroid Protection Program. Are you with me, people? We're going to read this article. Space Flight. I guess asteroids do fly in space. Asterisk. NASA Inspector Blast's Asteroid Protection Program. Cape Canaveral, Florida. NASA's effort to identify potentially dangerous space rocks has taken a hit. Wait, it's in Colorado? And it took a hit of marijuana to look at the problem from a different perspective? That doesn't sound so bad, man. You know, as long as it's got friends around and it's not driving, it's over 18, you know, maybe. Being on top of a mountain smoking a joint's gonna help NASA. I don't know. I'm scheduled to go to Colorado this spring and take a vacation. I'll have to find out for myself. Oh wait, maybe that's not what they meant. On Monday, the Space Agency's Inspector General released a report blasting NASA's Near Earth Objects Program, which is meant to hunt and catalog comets, asteroids, and relatively large fragments of these objects that pass within 28 million miles of Earth. The purpose is to protect the planet against their potential dangers. Well, you know, Maybe now that we're fighting Al-Qaeda, poverty, drugs, climate change, ISIS, Iskill, and whatever else, we just don't have time to fight asteroids, man. Maybe? Huh? Yeah, it sounds stupid to me, too. The purpose is to protect the planet against their potential dangers. Most near-Earth objects harmlessly disintegrate before reaching Earth's surface. But there are exceptions, like the nearly 60-foot meteor that exploded over Russia in 2013, causing considerable damage. You know, and I've been watching a lot of charty thingies and programs and asteroid simulators. And at this point, I'm guessing Earth has a lot of built-in strong defenses. Or we have a lot of Technology they don't tell us about and they're blasting these asteroids to smithereens. That was a sidebar. You can go ahead and object if you want. In a 44-page report, Inspector General Paul Martin said the near-Earth objects program needs to be better organized and managed with a bigger staff. NASA's science mission chief, former astronaut John Grunsfeld, agreed and promised the problems will be fixed. Well, John, maybe you should give me a call because you guys seem pretty dinosaur-y in your approach. You're super mixed messagey in your get out the word. I mean, I would guess that astronomy journalism is part of the hive mind. And they tell people whatever you want them to, however you want them to tell them, right? And all your astronomers and your astronomy journalists do is debunk people. And they're always like, no, this asteroid's not going to hit. And then if some does hit, they're like, well, nope, that wasn't that asteroid. It was a different asteroid that came from a different direction, came out of the sun's butt, we didn't see it. Boom. But it's not the one we said wasn't going to hit. Does that make any sense? I think I got off track. What I'm saying is that I've tried to communicate with many people in your asteroid divisions, and they won't talk to me at all. Whereas, I got some super cool, super smart guys in the heliophysics department answer all my questions. I got some kick-ass Mars engineers who will answer my questions. Every single asteroid person I'm aware of has blocked me. And I got mofos blocking me before I even knew they existed. I'm like, hey, this dude's cool. Let me try it out. He's an asteroid guy. Follow, boom, I'm blocked. It's like, why are you blocking me? If you don't like me, that means there is something wrong with you. Because I'm a good guy, you know? So your whole program seems discombobulated without a head, a direction, a message. I mean, I have scheduled, calculated, 
the, the finding don't make no sense. NASA places a high priority on finding and characterizing hazardous asteroids to protect our home planet from them. He said in a statement, well, if you go over the NASA budget and look at how you, and if you go over the NASA budget and look at how you guys spend your money, it's not really that high, high of a priority, man. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's pretty cut and dried. You know, it's almost like you guys are mad at the government for being so sucky, which is understandable. But then you somehow blame the people when you guys have been very ivory tower-ish for a while. And you treat us like you're a kindergarten teacher or you don't talk to us like humans. You just kind of yell at us and tell us, this is the deal. These are the facts. Science. It's the new religion. You know, believe it at 100% or you're going to hell. And by going to hell, I mean, you know, going into a black hole or something. Crap, I keep getting off fucking message, man. All right. In a 44-page report, Inspector General Paul Martin said the Near-Earth Objects Program needs to be better organized and managed with a bigger staff. I couldn't agree more, man. But here's this whole thing. You guys, I agree. You need more funding, but you need to show that you're worth it, you know? I don't want to say you guys have gotten lazy lately. It just seems like, I don't know. You guys are super Hufflepuff lately. That's all I'm saying is you're super Hufflepuff. And it gets on my nerves. And so it's like, you almost got to reinvent yourself. You almost got to restart from scratch. And reevaluate how you talk to people. How you talk to politicians. Your image. You know, we're the people. We're getting shit on from every direction. You're getting shit on by politicians. We're getting shit on by scientists. You know, it's like, you know, scientists made a joke the other day. Phil Plate. Was at a comic book convention, twittering, tweeting about how 97% of scientists are 100% sure climate change is totally caused by people. So you're in Hawaii at a comic convention, chastising us? Man, do you really think that, like, the people caused all these problems as opposed to the oil companies? <laughs> oh, man. You know, so I can work with you. I can help you. I can help you get a bigger budget. I can help you get a bigger staff. I can help you get organized and managed. But not if you're going to be so Hufflepuffy Slytherin. You know what I'm saying? NASA places a high priority on finding and characterizing hazardous asteroids to protect our home planet from them. Okay. According to the report, the program has an executive at NASA headquarters and two offices in Massachusetts and California, each with six employees. Twelve? I don't even think you could staff a McDonald's with twelve people, bro. Maybe like a snow cone stand for nearly a decade. Definitely a whorehouse. You could have a pretty, you know, profitable whorehouse with 12 people. Depends on how good them whores were, you know what I'm saying? All right, sorry, that was the uh, only thing I could think of. For nearly a decade, the report noted NASA has been tracking near-Earth objects bigger than 460 feet across. The goal was to catalog 90% by 2020. The space agency has discovered and plotted the orbits of more than 11,000 near-Earth objects since 1998, an estimated 10%. It does not expect to meet the 2020 deadline. Well, no shit. They have not been capped to meet deadlines lately. The program is insufficient oversight, much like the James Webb Telescope. Martin's office concluded, and no established milestones to track progress. In addition, NASA needs to do a better job of overseeing the various observatories searching for near-Earth objects and teaming up with other U.S. and international agencies, the report said. Couldn't agree more. <clears throat> what are you going to do about it? And what is it, what is your head chief guy named Charles Grodin? Man, Charles Grodin, how would you like a job as the NFL commissioner? You know, maybe you're better suited for that. And, um, you know, we can find somebody who... This makes me sad, you know, see the space program not doing so hot. And, god damn, you guys spend a shitload of time patting yourselves on the back. You know? Really. Uh, maybe dial it down. Maybe come down to earth a bit. Let's figure this shit out. I'm under the impression you guys are just waiting for a big old rock to hit Earth. And then you can be like, see, told you so. Now can we get a lot of money? Well, that's not that's not very heroic, man. But I know this is capitalism. And, um, well, ain't shit I can do right now. You're NASA. I'm just a YouTuber that nobody even watches or listens to. Right? All right. Well, God bless everybody. Remember, NASA, I still love you. But, um, all right, everybody in the comments section... Nah, I won't do that. Okay, God bless everybody. Sorry for a preachy episode of Asteroid Fight Club. Crap, I hope I was funny. Was I funny? Didn't mean to fool ya! Bum, ba-dum, 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 bum.
Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Oh, oh. Climate change. Hey, Phil Play, when are you going to write a fucking article on fucking asteroid fucking danger, fucking man? Hey, what the F is this?